All right, 2024 is really bringing the heat for horror so far, and if the crazy release schedule can deliver some bangers, then we're looking at another fantastic year. Late Night with the Devil was written and directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns, and stars David Dasmalgen as a late night TV host who pushes a Halloween special further than he'd hoped to in an attempt to save his dwindling ratings. Good evening. My name's Evan and welcome to Rockland Graves. I know I'm a few days late to this one, but that's because I didn't think I'd have time to go out and see the movie for review, but blessed be to Vertigo Releasing for sending over a screener so I could actually take a look at this thing, and I am incredibly grateful for it because I had such a fun time with this movie. I remember being pretty interested when I saw the trailer a few months ago when I covered it on a live show with the Splattercast and Beyond the Void. The commitment to recreating a late night show in the 70s was great to see and I love analog horror and lost media and that sort of stuff so this has definitely been on my radar. See I was a little disappointed that I wasn't going to be able to make it out and see it in time to make a video about it so when I woke up with a screener I immediately threw that sucker on and now well, I'm gonna talk about it. That's how this works. Right off the bat, please, can we start giving David Desmelchin the respect he deserves? The dude's got one of the most fascinating resumes out there, from playing bit parts in different movies, hosting the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards, and fucking Dune 2. His range is great, and every single time he's involved in something, his talent as an actor and his charisma and clear love for the craft is infectious. The guy's amazing, and getting to see him in a leading role was such a treat, and it just makes me want to see him more. He is so believable in this role as a late-night host who's actually got a surprising amount of depth to him considering the kind of movie we're talking about here. It's difficult to flesh characters out in a movie with this style of structure, so the fact that we get a glimpse at so many different angles of his character is great, and Dasmelchin handles all all of those elements so well and so believably. He's a sympathetic character, but there's also a hell of a lot more going on, and I was surprisingly conflicted once some things got revealed. I think a big reason you don't just wind up against him after learning a thing or two is thanks to how charismatic and likable Desmelchin is, and you know, that can be a tricky balance to hit, so bravo. I love this dude, I want to see him in more leading roles. Something that I want to praise about the structure of this movie is that we basically aren't missing any time between scenes. What I mean by that is that we follow this broadcast from start to finish without any time skips or weird jumps, and that allowed for a really smooth and immersive watch because nothing gets broken up. You're right there alongside the live audience for the duration of the movie, at least for the most part, but I can't talk about that without spoiling things, and being able to pace something like that well enough without losing so much as a minute of in-universe time is really impressive. The movie's got a tight runtime that feels very well spent, not wasting any time on anything that doesn't actively progress the story or embellish on it in some way. Because it flows so seamlessly from start to finish, it's just really engaging. Speaking of things being seamless, the period piece element of this movie is handled with so much care. It's really nice to find something with as much attention to detail as you see here, not just in set design, which is fantastic, but also in the way characters speak to each other, the motion graphics used for the broadcast, and of course, the visual style leaning very heavily into that 70s aesthetic. There wasn't any element of this movie that took me out of the time and place the story was being told from, which is another reason I found it to be so immersive. Tone-wise, this thing is going to be something that'll become a staple in many households during the beautiful Halloween season. It just oozes that nostalgic Halloween vibe that I feel like a lot of us look back on fondly, but is very rarely evoked in media, so seeing that resembled the feeling of like an old spooky children's Halloween book on screen. It was lovely. To clarify though, this is not a kid's movie. Like, not at all. But I, I think you get what I'm trying to say. That's always one of the most exciting things for me after finishing a movie. If I realize afterwards that I'm gonna revisit it during spooky season and it's gonna fit in, then I'm just full of joy because I get to add another tonally cohesive beauty to the roster, and this is definitely going to be one of those movies. I do think this would have been great as an October release for that reason, but hey, the box office speaks, and clearly the release window isn't hurting them. I think the concept of this one is tough to fully flesh out into a feature film without filler or pushing things so far early on to keep the audience's attention, and the restraint that this movie shows in slowly building up to the climax is something I really respect. They clearly knew that they had a really entertaining script and a cast that was more than capable of carrying it through, and 
Because of that, we get to really sit in this broadcast and watch as things play out, often in a very understated way. Although a handful of sequences are punctuated by some pretty crazy things that definitely go over the top, but not in a way that ruins anything. I don't want to make it sound like this is like a super grounded, gritty movie, because that's definitely not the case. It's very much designed to be a fun horror movie that leans heavily into its, into its aesthetic, but... I was a little shocked by the restraint they showed at times, and especially so at some moments that evoked more emotion out of me than I'd anticipated going in. It just feels really well crafted. There are some awesome practical effects on display here as well, which is something that I'm always glad to see, and while there is some CGI that isn't the most seamless, there's one use of it towards the end that was so cool and felt like it fit the aesthetic of the movie well enough that it being CGI didn't bother me. It's noticeable VFX work, but it's not distracting, if that makes sense. This is one that's really hard to talk about without spoiling it because the premise is so simple and the things that make it so damn awesome are also things I don't really want to talk about here because I think you should go into this as blind as you can. It's paced very well, the acting is great, the aesthetic has a ton of attention and care put into it, and when it starts firing on all cylinders, this movie is one of the most fun watches I've had in a long time. I highly, highly recommend you go check out Late Night with the Devil as soon as you can, and I also recommend throwing it on your list for this October because it'll fit in so well for that time of year. I know I will be, I can't wait. This is one I may want to do a more in-depth video on at some point, but I'm going to leave it there for now so I don't ruin the experience for anyone. I should mention though, there was a thing a couple days back where it came out that some of the motion graphics had used AI, uh, like, you know, image generating AI, and uh, there were some, there were some concerns. I certainly had some concerns because I don't want to, you know, promote that sort of thing. I don't want to reinforce it, but the filmmakers came out, the crew came out, they were very transparent about it saying that this was like early right when the image generators were starting to be a thing and you know we're an indie film everyone was playing with ai you were too so i get that for that situation i feel comfortable uh showing support for this movie especially because it, it is such an inspired movie this doesn't feel like something that was like lazily thrown together or anything like that this is a great movie and for this situation i, I am okay with it. I just don't want that precedent to be set. You know, once that seed gets laid, then I immediately start getting nervous because I'm like, that's how it starts, man. I don't, it's... <laughs> anyway, yeah. I know I said in the last video that Blood and Honey 2 was up next, but that's because I hadn't expected to see Late Night with the Devil. I'm seeing Blood and Honey tonight, actually, and I'm gonna crunch to get a video out hopefully tomorrow, but until then, thank you for stopping by Rockland Graves. I hope you've enjoyed your stay.